Today I'm teaching you how to turn this into this using just your phone with PixArt, Lightroom Mobile, and Lens Distortions. So first things first, we're gonna launch PixArt. This is the first time I'm actually using PixArt because so many of you guys suggested it. Once you're in here, click the plus button and you should see all your photos at the top. Now we're gonna select our background image. I'm gonna link it down in Google Drive so you guys can get the same pictures if you wanna use them. So once you're here, you have the background image loaded up, click on effects at the bottom and then scroll over until you find the blur option. Once you're in here, select the first blur and then tap on it again to bring up the settings. You can adjust the level of blur that you want. Usually people would stick to like a 10-ish, but for this image, I wanna do six as the blur, so it's not too crazy. Once we have our blur all sorted out, the next thing would be to scroll over, tap on add photo. Here we're gonna add the model image, which in this case is me. Tap on that, click add, and then load up your image and scale it up to the right size. Now before clicking confirm at the top, swipe over till you find cutout, tap on cutout, click select and person. So that's how easy it is to make a selection in PixArt. Last time I did it in Snapseed, it took forever. So PixArt, a lot easier, uh, a lot better app to do that. So tap the eye tool to see your selection and you can pretty much see that it's done a pretty good job, except for the hands there, it's kind of transparent. So click on the brush tool right there. What we're gonna do is paint back the details. So make sure your hardness is at the lowest, the size is a bit medium, and then start slowly painting back the details that need to be actually in the image. So you can overdo it a little bit, the goal here first is to get all the major details. If you overdo it a little bit, tap on erase, make the hardness a little bit towards the center side and the size as well, and then slowly start painting out the excess. So I turn on the red mask button there so I can see what I'm painting out and remove everything that you don't want to be in the final image. You can turn this off and on to see what it looks like. And I'm just gonna speed up this part really quick. Okay, once you're happy with your selection, resize it again. And before you click the check mark, we need to color match us with the background. So tap on adjustment, make the brightness slightly lower because the background is pretty dark. And I'm gonna do the same thing with contrast. We're gonna add a little bit more contrast because the background is fairly contrasty. For clarity, I'm also gonna add just a wee bit of clarity in there. And then for saturation, since we're indoors and the light is a little bit less, we're gonna reduce saturation to like minus four, minus five. Then I'm gonna move over to the temperature, make it a little bit warmer because our image was kind of cool and uh, this image looks like it should be a little bit warmer. For our highlights, we're gonna check the background exposure for highlights and try to match that with my shirt's level of highlights, so slightly reduced and shadows slightly increased. Once you're happy with that, tap on the check mark at the top right and that's the baseline start to the color match. Next, we move on to the fun stuff. Press draw and draw again, click on add object and click photos. Here we're gonna select the fire images that we wanna use. I wanna start with this image, so tap on it and then click the check mark. Once you have it there, we're gonna reposition it to the right location roughly, tap the layers button at the top, and then you can see it's a separate layer. Here we're gonna reduce the opacity a little bit so we can see where it's gonna be positioned, and then tap the three buttons right there above the layer, and then click on transform. This allows us to customize the transformation so you can move it around, resize it as you wish. I want it to go from my thumb to my pinky finger, so we're gonna position it that way so it looks pretty good. Once you're happy, click on done, and then we're gonna increase the opacity back to 100. Then tap the arrow key and change the blend mode to screen. So this is pretty much what we'll use for all the images after, but once you have this, you can see that there's a square around the image. We don't want that. Tap on erase and then click on the brush that we're gonna use. Make sure your size is the max size possible and opacity is at 50%. Tap the arrow, make your hardness zero and zoomability on. Then slowly and gradually start painting around the edge of the border that you can see until you see that line disappear. We basically just want to blend it as well as possible with the image inside without any border. So it actually looks like it's a flame there. Then we're going to click the layers again and add an empty layer. Again, import a new picture. We're going to use the fireball picture. Crop it up to the right size that you need because we don't need the entire image and then tap the done button. Then we're going to do the same thing again. Change the blend mode to screen and reposition it to the right place. Tap the three buttons, transform, and reposition it within the hand. This is the core of the fire. So once you reposition it, move it to the layer underneath because we want it to be right in the middle there. After you've done that, same thing again, go to the erase 
And this time around, when you zoom in, we want this to be inside the hand. So with the erase tool, increase the hardness a little bit and the opacity. Uh, make sure the opacity is like around 60-ish and then increase the hardness as well. And then start painting back in your fingers because we need this to be behind the fingers, like it's inside of our hand. So that's why we move this layer one, one layer down. So we have one layer of fire and then this layer underneath that. So it actually looks like we're holding it in our hands. As you can see, when I zoom out on the image here, it makes a huge difference placing it right there. Now to make it even more realistic, add another layer on top and import these spark images. So we're going to import this image of sparks and change the blend mode to screen once again and position it in our hands perfectly to where the origin of the fire is. So this is where the sparks start. And then finally, I'm going to add another layer. And this one is going to be the bonfire motion blur type of sparks and embers that you get out of very strong fires. Again, change the blend mode to screen, transform and position it in such a way that these sparks are flying very far away from the main source of the fire. So when I turn the layers on and off, you can see how much difference it makes to add multiple layers to add depth and make it look a lot more realistic. Now, how do we make the fire interact with us? Create a new empty layer and put it beneath the fire layers. All the fire layers underneath it. Tap on new shape and make a circle and select the type as fill. Tap OK and then select your color with the eye picker tool. Pick the fire color, the more orange tones, the darker tones, and then draw a circle around your face next to your body just basically closer to the fire. Then again, go back to your layers, click the transform, and we're going to move this to make the center roughly the same as where the fire would start. This is basically going to act as the glow coming off of the fire, which interacts with us. Now, obviously it's weird. Change the blend mode to add, and then we're going to click the eraser tool. And just like we did last time, we're going to decrease the opacity and make the borders a lot more soft. So decrease opacity to about 30% and then tap the eraser tool. Here, we're going to make the opacity of the brush about 80% and we're gonna make the brush huge and also reduce the hardness all the way to zero. Now, just like last time, we're gonna erase the borders of the circle, make it as soft as possible by slowly and gradually painting around the borders. Now, don't worry if you do too much, you can use the brush to paint back in just like I did. Now, tap layers again and create a new layer. This is gonna be for the reflection of the fire in my glasses. Change the blend mode to add for this one as well. And with the brush and color, just make a rough shape of what fire would look like as a reflection. And then we're going to obviously zoom out and reduce the opacity to what looks a little bit realistic. You obviously do this only if you have glasses. Then again, uh, this is looking pretty good, but I think we can add more glows, create a new layer and change the blend mode for this to lighten. Here, we're going to take the same color and paint around the parts of my face where the glow of the fire would be the most like powerful. So obviously that would be on the right side of my face, which is closer to the fire. You can roughly paint over the face here. Don't worry if it looks weird right now. We'll fix it a little bit later. Especially remember to paint on the hand as well because that's where it's going to be the brightest. And then we're going to decrease the opacity all the way down to about 60%. This is where it looks pretty nice. I think that looks pretty good. So that's pretty much the baseline edit. Now you can save the image and this is what you're going to get after you've done the basic edits within PixArt. Now you could leave the image there, but obviously I'm going to take it into Lightroom and color grade it to the way that I want it to look. Uh, this is a very personalized look. You can do whatever you want, but this is what I get after color grading the image. It kind of ties it in together. Lastly, I open it up within lens distortions, add this little lens flare with a lower opacity to the hand because we want to add a little bit more of that glow in the hand. So reduce the opacity to about 10, 15 percent. And the final touch I'm going to add to this is a sort of snowy look in front of this. So it looks like a broken window or there's ashes flying around and that completes the overall image. Just tap on save and you've created a pretty badass artwork using just your smartphone and a few free applications. Like this video and comment down below if you want to see more videos just like this. I'll see you in the next one.